Hilton Head. Hilton Head. What bring you way down here? All that beautiful come stuff down around to, Hilton Head. We come down to see you. You brought us down here. Oh, really? Yeah. I saw you on television and I knew we had to come. So we're playing a bike ride up here. Oh, okay. So how big is your staff? <laughs> how long does it take you to do this? 1980, this was a coin. Really? And so what happened is I moved here from New York, Atlanta. Yeah. The company that I work for in New York. You don't mind me filming, you do? So, and, they just, and I decided to stay because they built a facility here. And I'm originally from North Carolina. So I came here with my company. And then when I decided to stay, I decided to do this garden from a creative point of view because yeah. I've always been creative. So then I went to work. You know nothing about how to culture, never had a garden before. I lived on the second floor in New York and all that. And so once I got into it, um, people began to recognize what I do as art. And so a few years later, it really started getting attention about it because it was so creative. Yeah. And I broke all the rules because I knew nothing about how to culture. And so, my first major show was like um, uh, Picture Garden. And oh, then yeah, I did yeah. Fine Gardening Magazine. And then by the middle of the 90s, I was really getting started getting attention. And attention. And so, today, uh, I give scholarships to C students. And my student must go to a junior college, community college, because I speak at major universities. I've even spoken at Harvard, um, hmm. uh, University of Kentucky, University of Georgia, Virginia Tech. And my message to students is this. What you might do well may never show up on a test score. And we are so academically conscious that we stigmatize a, a number of students that fall through the cracks because of their test scores. Yep. And if a student here, you can't accomplish this or that, yep, I agree. by the time they're in the 10th grade, they yep. believe it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you're only talking from an academic point of view. Yep. Now, I went to college, I did it by the book, but I was always creative. But I was 40 years old before I could afford my talent. Yeah. Today, because of my talent, I'm, I'm going to be on Broadway in January. You're going to be on Broadway? Yeah, I do. I'm all over. You won't believe where I've been. Mm -hmm. And some of the things I've done for talent yeah. that you can't teach. Mm -hmm. So if the financial resources was the same at the bottom as it was at the top, we'd save a lot of prison. Mm -hmm. Kids yeah, going exactly. to prison. Because you would be surprised at the talent that's in prison. Yeah. And it became frustrating as a kid growing up. So uh, so that's really my point. Yeah. And so today now, just because of my talent, I got a movie made about me, I've done John Deere commercials, I've done all this, and I tell students, success is determined by three things, work, passion, and marketing. And if you have an idea and get it to the point that you need academics, check the circle you run in. If you are the smartest person in your circle, you want to run with people smarter than you. The dumbest thing in the world is run with people that, that, that you were the top of the line, top, the most intelligent person in your group. And the other thing is run with people that's got more than you. Because if they like what you're doing, they're going to support it and bring you up to their level. You see what I mean? And when you get that idea, the next step is when you get that idea to the point that you need academics, you go back and hire the top of your class. Because 99% of people get an education to work for someone else. Bill Gates dropped out of college. But he had an idea, and when he got that idea to the point he needed academics, he went back to Harvard and had cum laude and summa cum laude and a whole nine yards. Today he's the second richest man in the world, and you'll never hear anyone complain about working for a college dropout. So if you can't be number one in your class, and I said to the student, look at that student in the back of the class, that's barely going to get out of college, that's barely going to get out of this class, but he or she wants more than it can accomplish from an academic point of view. Now they're going to go back and draw from their talent. Maybe go out here and create this small business. they become a major corporation, and they're going to come back and hire you. It happens all the time. Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Sam Walton, 
And these are people that we know about. But there is a number of people you never hear that start a small business and maybe employ 10 or 12 or 15 people because they went back and drew from their strength. Mm -hmm. And the moment that we realize that we're never going to solve poverty and crime without education. And so it is very important that each student today should get at least an associate degree. You're going nowhere with a high school diploma. I worked for the industry 36 years, and today they want degrees. Well, you, know, you know, the important thing about the education is got to be the right kind of education for your talent, for your ability, for your, your passion, for your desire. Well, it can't just be general, I got a four-year degree in college. So what? It's got to be something that you'd like to do. Yeah, but the thing about it is this. My background is mathematics and chemistry. Is it? Yeah. I become known for cutting up bushes. <laughs> but you know where my education fell? You, no matter how good you are at what you do, you must be able to deliver. To deliver? Yeah. Right. Yeah. See. So, trust me, I'm pretty good at what I do. But if I hadn't had a little education, I would have never spoken at Harvard. So I gotta be able to deliver. Yeah. That's what education is. And the moment you take what education you have and cross it with what you do well, then you become a master of what you do. Because as long as you work from the book, if you ever hear a person say the book says, oh, this is what I was taught, then there's a person that's never gonna get credit for what they do because the person that wrote the book has already gotten credit for that. Now I get high culture people coming out here with PhDs and all these degrees and they'll say to me, you shouldn't have been able to do that. And in my movie, I got tired of hearing that. So one day this fellow came through and he said, well, look, I got a PhD in this and I got a master in, and you, you shouldn't have been able to do this. These plants shouldn't have, you shouldn't be able to prune to this extent. And I looked at him and I said, you know what? I did, huh? I didn't know that. <laughs> and for one time in my life, yeah. ignorance paid off mm. because you are speaking to me from the book. And I broke the rules. Now, I'm going to write my book. And my book is going to be titled What You Don't Find in Other Books. <laughs> now, he's doing all that. And I'm saying you got a movie. I'm doing all getting all this attention for cutting up bushes. Right? Mm -hmm. And why? Because no one else does what I do. No one else cut bushes the way I do. Only because... I decided to do what I wanted to do. And if that wasn't true, all inventions should be by professors. But a professor can teach a student that better get out of college of that class and he or she come out and invent something.
All right.